very good day to you and welcome to the program from Snowy and myself. I want to speak to you about chief of all sinners. Who said that? Paul said that when he wrote a letter to his disciple Timothy. Snowy's agreeing with me here. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Jesus did not come into the world to save good people. He came into the world to save sinners like me and you. And the sooner we realize that, the better. Folks, they even asked Jesus, what are you doing talking to those Pharisees, those publicans, those tax collectors? Don't you realize they're stealing our money? What are you going into that place there where there are immoral women? Jesus said, I came for the sick and not for the healthy. And we need to understand that, folks, especially those of us who love God. Okay? We must have patience. Because, but by the grace of God, there goes I, right? And that's exactly what uh, Paul was telling his son in the Lord, Timothy, of which I was the chief. One thing about Paul, he knew who he was before he became a Christian. Remember, he was persecuting the Christians. And then the Lord met him on the road to Damascus. And instantly his life changed. And he became, in my humble opinion, the greatest of all the apostles. He was a really incredible man of God. And I look forward to meeting him in heaven. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And the, and the Bible says, And he will save his people from their sins. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. The Bible says, and all, that's all, means all, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is no one, apart from Jesus Christ himself, who is without sin. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. Look at a woman with lust in your heart, and you have already committed adultery. That means not one of us is without sin. The Bible says if you look at your brother's uh, possessions with uh, a covetous eye, you've stolen them. He says if you look at somebody with anger in your heart, you've committed murder. That means all of us are sinners. There's not one who is without sin. And that is why we need to repent and ask God to forgive us. The Bible says that the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I came to give you life abundantly. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, The wages of sin is death. Haven't we seen that? But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's what happened to me. I was going nowhere fast. I was going down until I met the Son of God, Jesus Christ, on the 18th of February, 1979, and my life changed instantly. I'm not a good man. I'm a sinner saved by grace. But of course, that doesn't give me an excuse to continue to live an immoral life. When you give your life to Jesus, there must be change. Jesus says you shall know them by the fruit. Okay, by their fruit. An apple tree does not produce oranges. An orange tree produces oranges. When you give your life to Christ, you confess your sins. 1 John 1 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, qualified, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. My dear friend, today you can be righteous through Christ. All you've got to do is ask him to forgive you, stop what you're doing and walk the other way and your life will start again. Until next time, goodbye.